Welcome back to the Five Fantasy Football Show. I'm here with Liv, as I am every week. Although we haven't been here for a couple of weeks, no Premier League football. The last time we were on the show, <laughs> though, humiliated ourselves. Yeah, big time humiliated ourselves. I know. Um, what we Sonny, Sonny. Sonny starting on the bench. I was buzzing, making it everyone, you know, maybe making my point known know. that everyone should have gone for Kane. How on earth he comes off the bench and scores a hat trick in like... 10 minutes or whatever he did. I know. We told everybody at home to be dropping Sonny. <laughs> yes. Even Conte Don't listen to us. Drop Sonny. Don't <laughs> listen to us. But <laughs> yeah. one man went against the grain. Rio mm. Ferdinand, channel's very own, instead of taking him out, bought him in. Unsurprisingly, he's very smug. Yes, guys. Fantasy football. We're back. We're here. My team is in. Last week I put Son in, didn't I? Whoa. He got me the hat trick. He got me the hat trick. I was thinking, shall I captain in, captain Son or not? But you know what? I'm going to go for Mitrovic. Mitrovic, I'm going to go for them. He's home against Newcastle, tight ground, tight pitch. Son, away to Arsenal, difficult game. Also, you've got the Manchester derby. And that's going to be a big one. Do I fancy United to win? I think the score draw I'm going to go for. Maybe that's my heart over my head, but I'm going to go for a score draw. Um, I just love playing in the derby. Tough game, but I used to love it. Um, and I'm sure after the international, people will be chomping at the bit to get back into that. Premier League's back. We can't wait. So, Rio, yeah, very smug about Son. However, I still stand by the point I made two weeks ago when I said about having Kane over Son. Okay. And I stand by that. I still think Kane is a better long-term option. Kane's returned in every game bar one this season. Mm. That was Son's first game that he returned in. Yes, he's brilliant. We all knew who's going to come good at some point. But to me, he's point three cheaper as well, Harry Kane. He's on pens. He's going to play every single game. And, Joe, it's the North London derby this weekend. And he doesn't he score like every single fixture in the North London? I feel like he's scored every single game. He does hold the record for the most goals in the North London derby. However... In terms of teams, we may as well talk about the North London yeah. derby now, right? Because there are some assets and some battles we've got to discuss mm -hmm. in terms of fantasy prem for this as well. I do think that although Kane scores in lots of goals, the team that plays at home in North London derby tends, tends to, to do a lot mm. better. You know, I'm expecting Arsenal to come out of the traps really <laughs> quickly. However, let's start with Kane because you've brought him up there. It's a big battle, isn't it? Kane versus William Saliba. A lot of people mm. have William Saliba in their team. He's returned an awful lot of games. He's scored goals. Mm -hmm. He's kept clean sheets. And Kane, like you said, the returns are still absolutely ridiculous, aren't they? Like he's still got 10 points. I again, know. against against Leicester. I know. Um, they did score six goals. To be fair, I know, I know, I know. But like that, th those returns are are ridiculous. I've got him, and, and I'm obviously I I'm not was never going to go Son, and I, I won't. I, I can see why people do, but the fact that usually Son's cheaper in this game, isn't mm. he? And and Harry Kane will see Son Son yeah. winning, winning the Golden Boot. But to me, Harry Kane, I think this is William Saliba's biggest test. Um, Arsenal's fixtures we all knew were pretty e I say easy on paper easy because no game's that easy but like they had a nice run mm. of fixtures didn't they uh, but I, I was really impressed with Saliba again um, at Brentford I was at that game yeah. and he I actually interviewed him after the game and he, he was name dropped yeah, yeah, up yeah. Here. I also met Roberto Carlos but yeah. anyway it's for another another time um, yeah <laughs> William Saliba was, I was just so impressed with how he literally nullified Ivan Tony. Mm. now Ivan Tony going into that game only Jesus and Haaland had been involved in more goals than Ivan Tony. Yeah. Off the back of that hat trick as well. It, literally nothing. Brentford did not have a single kick in that game. And I was so impressed with Saliba. However, Harry Kane, especially Harry Kane in London derbies, is a whole nother test. And I think this is where we'll really see what that Arsenal backline are made of. Yeah. The only other thing I want to bring up quickly, if you are a Son owner, this might be a relatively good game to keep Son in. Yeah. Because we've seen how Arsenal want to play with that higher line. What Manchester United did extremely effectively was exploit the space in behind yeah. it. And if Tottenham are going to have success this weekend, I think that's what you're going to see. It's going to be Son and Richarlison yeah. running off of Kane in behind, trying to exploit Saliba on the turn. 
And if that's going to happen, I can imagine Son scoring. So I think Richarlison's also quite an interesting asset mm -hmm. as well, isn't he? Given that Kulisevsky what? looks like he's out injured. Yeah, I was just about to say, because his returns, I mean, not they've been every game, because obviously, I mean, he, one of them, he only played 12 minutes, but he's a big miss in terms of, mm. I know Richarlison will get up for it because we know he can get up for most yeah. games. So he'll get up for the North London derby with it being his first. Um, but I think that's a big miss for Spurs. And also that's interesting because um, we'll get into transfers a little bit later on, but with Kulisevsky out, out and us not knowing how long he's going to be out for with everyone having so many games mm. who people are going to be looking to transfer in to replace him is going to be an interesting one as well I think yeah absolutely we'll flip it as well because I think it's worth discussing another good battle Gabby yeah. Jesus versus Eric Dyer. Eric Dyer having a really good time of it at the moment called up into that England international squad again looks much much more composed in the middle of about three under Antonio Conte but Gabby Jesus is is such like a sticking point in every mm. discussion I have with people about FPL. They've either got him or they haven't because he's price dropped again this week. I think that despite the fact he's playing so brilliantly, the goal returns. It was annoying me. It's, it's still so questionable. I took really him out as part me. of my wild so card. Did I. And then he came straight away and scored, didn't he? I mean, it was a very, very good goal as well. The it header was. was very good. And he and played brilliantly. He did play brilliantly, but he should have scored more in that game. Mm. The chances he had, I just, I just... I mean, with Mitrovic potentially injured and, and not playing um, this weekend, we're not quite sure yet, but I have enough money to transfer Jesus back in Are if I gonna? want to. I'm going to listen to Marco Silva's press conference yeah. this week uh, before the game to see, because I'm 99% sure he'll probably come out and say he will play or he won't yeah. play. Um, or he might be one of them that's like, oh, he's got to have a late fitness test, which would be really annoying. But currently 50% on the app, Mitro. So that could be another one. And I could go for Gabby Jesus, but he was just really frustrating me. Like, I know he's been getting returns. You can see them there, but not enough for how well he was playing. And that's what was frustrating me about him. But again, I think it's gonna be really interesting to see him up against that Spurs defence that have looked a lot more solid under Antonio Conte. I'm really excited for this North London derby. Yeah. Ideally, it would be a draw. They are always entertaining. And there's another derby to talk about this weekend, though. The Manchester derby, uh, which, you know, as Rio was alluding to there, I think he's gone head over heart a little bit. I think Manchester United personally might be in a little bit of trouble here. It looks like if you are a Rashford owner or an Anthony Martial owner, be very careful this week. They haven't been training. Uh, Anthony Martial has been out for an extended period of time. Marcus Rashford has picked up a recent injury. Mm. He hasn't trained. And that feels like a huge loss to United, especially when they aren't going to have the ball and going to have to counter attack. I was going to say, especially with the way they play in those big games against the likes of Liverpool and City, we saw it executed to perfection, basically, mm. against Liverpool. Um, but again, they know that's the only way they're going to play. Yeah. So, Again, we'll, we'll cover this in the transfers bit, but who people are going to bring it, be bringing in to replace Rashford if they've got him or if they're going to hold him. Because he's cheap. Because he is, he's very cheap. But now there are a few, maybe a few more players around his price point that you could be looking to um, bring in. Um, <laughs> Erling Haaland, I mean, he scored again for mm. Norway. He just keeps on scoring. And I, I don't think, even though I've been quite impressed with Martinez coming in and with all the stick he got after that first couple of games, mm. he's actually been pretty good since. However, they haven't come up against anyone like her. I mean, I'd say that most Premier League defences won't come up against anyone like Erling Haaland. Yeah. But I, I could see him scoring one too. Yeah, I would I be just... surprised to see Manchester United keep a clean sheet in this game. And I think every Manchester United fan would agree with me on that point. Lissandro Martinez does have history against Erling Haaland. They played against each other in the Champions League. I believe Lissandro Martinez picked up the Man of the Match award that day. Ooh. So it's not a foregone <laughs> conclusion that he's just going to be totally dominated by Haaland. But I kind of expect it to happen. It's one of them things you mm. just... You know, who does Holland not dominate? I can't I can't see a world where he doesn't score goals in this game and Man City don't score goals in this game. The problem is with City, or like playing against City, is yeah, your defenders are occupied by Erling Haaland more often than not two of them are occupied mm. to, to keep him sort of away. But you've got to try and stop the source. Mm. Those balls into the box. He doesn't score goals where he takes it around a few players and bends it in the top corner. He has scored most of his goals inside the box, inside the six yard box, like yeah. or that area. So if you got easier said than done, but cutting off the KDB, Cancelo, cutting off those balls are going to be a lot easier to defend yeah. against Erling Haaland because he's got no service. Yeah. Also, KDB is another one, talking of City, who, I mean, he's just unbelievable. And on a wild card, a lot of people went for De Bruyne. Yeah, changing um, out for Salah, who has been underperforming. Yeah, there. which, I mean, in hindsight, does look a great... He actually, you know, he's blanked in two games this season, but... 
that is it. Yeah, exactly. And now I'm like, should I have should I have done that straight swap? But obviously that's after his ten point haul against Wolves. So yeah, but I wouldn't put I wouldn't bet against him doing that against United yeah. because he's he's that good. Another asset I just want to worth talking about. I think is Christian Eriksen had an amazing international break. Is on set pieces as well. Importantly for Manchester United, and it does feel increasingly like if United are going to get anything out of this game without Rashford's ability on the break, set pieces are going to be really really vital mm. and if Christian Eriksen's taking free kicks if he's on corners I think that could be an area to target given that you know he has just won Manchester United's player of the month award despite the fact Rashford won the Premier League's player of the month award oh, that's weird um, I think it's yeah for me I would definitely be considering Eriksen as an asset going forward just not in this Manchester Manchester derby yeah I, I've actually been really really impressed with Christian Eriksen like I knew yeah. we all knew how good he was when he was at Spurs and even at Brentford we knew he was way too good to be playing at Brentford Mm. but you just wasn't you just weren't sure what it was going to be like at Man United but he has been unbelievable he's been so good and how how much is he's cheap but he's also playing a little bit deeper isn't he so his value I you know he wouldn't Listen, be, he wouldn't be the first name I mean, on my team sheet yeah like maybe it's worth obviously he got his first assist of the season against mm. Arsenal so maybe it's worth holding off until after this game I mean maybe because you He's not the sort. He's the sort of player again that you watch Man United, and he will do. He will be brilliant. He'll control but the midfield, return. but he'll. He's the sort of player that maybe will get the the brilliant assist. Uh, the brilliant assist to the assist. Yeah, yeah. So exactly. maybe like he's not. I mean, he's only six point three, but I feel like it's probably better options in terms of FPL. Players. I would just be steering clear of Manchester United assets this week. I just don't yeah. see them getting anything out of this game. Let us know what you guys at home are going to do in the Manchester derby, though. I'm presuming everybody's going to be stacking up on Manchester City players mm. in the comments below. Yes, also, um, but not too many Man City players because they blank in a few games yes, time do. as well, don't they? Um, but also with um, with uh, Rashford and Martial both out. Mm. Who is going to start up front for Manchester United, Joe? Well, you would say on paper it has to be Cristiano, doesn't it? And now that he's up to match fitness, he was obviously playing international games midweek, not particularly well, but it's probably <laughs> going to be Cristiano Ronaldo. I don't think you're going to see a situation where he's trying to operate with a false nine or he's playing a langer through the middle again. But then again. doesn't that like, when you think of the way Man United are going to have to play, Yeah. does, that, does Ronaldo suit that? So I don't think he's got a choice. I just don't do see the think. other options out there. The other option is to play Anthony Langer through the middle, and I just don't think that's... that that's a viable option right now for Manchester United. So I fully expect Ronaldo to start through the middle. And you know, don't ever discount Cristiano in big games. You know, yeah. we've seen him do it before. I remember last season a lot of people sort of saying similar sort of things. And then he smashed in a hat trick against Tottenham. So mm. uh, you know, he can just produce moments of magic. But I just still wouldn't be touching Cristiano Ronaldo with a barge pole right now. I don't think I don't think anyone would, to be honest. But yeah, let us know what you're going to do with the Man United assets and your City assets as well. Moving on to some transfers to watch out for your teams this week then. And we're starting with James Madison, who you are considering bringing in. Yeah, do you know what's so funny is that I literally, before the last game week, when a lot of people were like putting their wild cards on Twitter, they were like, a lot of people had Jared Bowen and James Madison. Yeah. And I was like, I literally tweeted being like, why on earth anyone, everyone going for James Madison went, and Jared Bowen? Bowen. I yeah, I, I, I still have that same question for you. Why on earth are you going Jared Bowen? But actually... When you look at James Madison, who's been playing in a very, very poor mm. Leicester team, returned in the first game. So returned in three consecutive games at the start of the season, then didn't play, then got seven, two and one. Yeah. But that's in a very, and that was against Man United he didn't return in. He returned against Arsenal. I just think, look at that run of games. He is the, Leicester can't be, I'm sorry, they can't really be as bad. I thought they started really brightly <sighs> against, against Spurs. Did you watch the game? They actually started yeah. well, but they have started well before. But the problem is I'm not expecting Leicester to win. I don't need Leicester to win. You just need James Madison to score yeah. a goal and get an assist. And he by far is that be is the best Leicester player in that side by a country mile. Yeah, no doubt. 7.9 million is my only thing because you're looking at... But Kulisevsky, that could be a, a really solid option to take up Kulisevsky and put in James Madison. You're not that you don't. I don't. You're I not don't convincing know. I, I'm just so unconvinced by Leicester. Says someone that's got Jared Bowen. I know, in their team. and that was a mistake. That was that was probably a mistake for me. I, I, I but the thing Come is, is at this price, like, hmm. I think Mount is going to really fire under Graham Potter as well. And like at this price, and like Saka's at this price, yeah, like. Yeah. I think that Madison's really interested and I would be considering bringing him in just because of that run of fixtures. That run of fixtures is absolutely unreal. But Leicester, and I feel like a lot of Madison's goals 
are outside the box screamers and yeah. that you're relying on him to produce like a moment of magic every week to get you out I mean, of the he's hole. done it he's done it for most of, most of it so far he has oh. he has i don't think it's the worst option at all yeah I, i'm tempted to take jared bowen out and bring james madison in but i, I think that would be a very good move potentially but i have a forward issue in that uh, i've got ivan tony uh no i haven't i've got alexander isaac at the moment injured on international duty wanted to go to mitrovic injured on international duty what about that man and I am now considering two players. And one he's of not, them he's is... Considering one. Uh, I'm considering two. It's Liv fun. refuses to believe me. I am considering I'll believe it when I see it. Either Ivan Tony, because I've got the budget to do both of these, Ivan Tony or Dominic Solanke. I think Bournemouth have the best run between now and the World Cup of any team in the league. And I think if at any stage this season, Dominic Solanke is going to score five goals, four or five goals, it's going to be in this next eight games. I I, I love how serious you are about this. I, like this I is am. actually not a joke. I am. I actually. I will believe it when I see it because I don't believe it. I actually you. don't think Bournemouth have been as bad as people make out this season. They're 12th in the league. I think Gary O'Neill's got them playing pretty decent football. The run of fixtures is so good. And I, I don't think he's amazing, Dominic Slanky, but he's such <laughs> a cheap option. At 5.7, <laughs> literally... <laughs> it opens the door to be able to bring in more expensive midfielders. So I'm very, very tempted by Dominic Solanke, but I may end but up are you not it more tempted Ivan by Ivan Tony? Like, look at those, <laughs> I say look at those returns, again, similar to Madison, returned in the first three, but then got 17 points. Like, I feel like, like, Newcastle away is a tough game, Brighton at home, Chelsea at home, they beat us every year anyway, Villa, Wolves, Forest. That's a pretty good run of fixtures for Ivan Tony as well. And I feel like if you've got, I mean, obviously that's then, 21.7%. He's quite highly owed. It's a risk. Look, I'm not denying. This is quite major, early in the season risk. to take risks. It is, but I don't care. I'm you're considering it. It's not, a toss of a coin. You're also you're, not going to do it. I'll let you guys know what I did next week and whether or not I bottled it or whether or not I went for it. This reverse psychology that Liv's trying just, to I'm do not, where I'm she's trying not. to convince me to take. No, I'm not. I'm just saying Absolutely I don't, I don't, don't believe Dominic you. Solanke. I don't believe you're not going to put Dominic Solanke in your FPL team. Well, let's see. I... I I'm feel 50, like you're I'm just 50, 50 do it at the now, moment. Why don't you guys at home let me know whether or not you think <laughs> I should bring Dominic Solanke into my FPL team? Because I just don't think it's that ridiculous. I really don't. Uh, I, can talk... I can already tell you what they're going to say. Yeah. No, I reckon there might be a few agreements. <laughs> do you reckon we should talk about captains as well? Because it yes. feels now at this stage of the season, like if you haven't got Haaland, you're just missing a trick. I I mean, even in the even in like the, the difficult, I say so-called difficult games, like the big six games, the problem is, is mm. that he... Again, it doesn't even matter who they're playing. He's just scoring goals. He's scoring goals in the Champions League. He's scoring goals in international duty. Yeah. Like He doesn't ever look like... He literally doesn't look like stopping. And I feel like we're just talking about him over and over again. But to, to me, genuinely, there is no... Other than maybe KDB, if you're going to go KDB instead of Haaland... What about this man? No. Mo Salah. No. I Brighton gave, under I a gave, new coach this I week. I gave him enough chances... I gave Mohamed Salah enough chances to be in my team to get me some returns, and he didn't. Yeah. So knowing knowing fully full well, he's going to go and get a hat trick. Yeah, Brighton. I think I think Mo Salah against Brighton at home against the new manager Brighton. Yeah, but I in think, our, do you not think Berta de Zerbi, I think is a good opportunity given that if you haven't got him out of your side by now, I think I'm looking to bring Salah back in at game week 12 after I those round, of, round of fixtures after that. the Man City after the Arsenal, and then they get a nice run. But if you have got him in your team and you're planning on keeping him, I, I think he, like Brighton at home under a new manager is a great option. It is, but like, how different do you think, just giving Chelsea for an example where Graham Potter arrived, mm. that the first performance under Graham Potter was exactly the same as the performance, last performance under Tuchel. And, and I can't really see those Brighton players playing too different, too differently, even under a new manager th this soon after being hired, and and they will cause problems. They know how to play football without Graham Potter. Yeah. So I just think I think, admittedly, this is a good fixture for Salah. But I mean, a lot of people will have got will have got rid already because, like I said, yeah. they gave him enough chances. Obviously, I still at thirty five percent ownership though. It's, it's probably because he was about sixty percent ownership mm. at the start, so he probably has gone down quite a lot, but. Not if you've got, I mean, if you've got him and you've got Haaland, I just do not see a world in which you captain Salah. Well, this is all going to come back to bite you next Probably. week when Solanke scored a hat trick <laughs> and Mo Salah scored two. <laughs> Put it that way. Uh, I'm going Haaland though. You're going Haaland. Yeah. Let us know who you're going to captain in the comments below. Right, that's it for another week. Joe, so you're set on Erling Haaland as your captain. Maybe. And yeah. you're set on Dominic Solanke as well. Captaining I cannot wait. Solanke. I cannot wait to see your team. Why? You'll have got more points than me, but...
Fingers crossed. Yes. I mean, it's happened every other week, so why would it change this week? <laughs> Very true. Your deadline is at 11 o'clock on Saturday. Do not forget. Uh, make sure you let us know who you captain. Good luck, and we'll see you next week.